Do you want to see something super cool that only three people have ever seen in their lifetime? Yup! Hey, what's up, guys? Eric from GetInToWin.com, and you guys know who this is. This is Taron Butler. We're at his range today in Simi Valley, secret location. And speaking of secret, everybody wants to know what goes on behind the scenes. So I asked Taryn here to give me a tour of the facility. I'm pretty excited, I gotta be honest. So Taryn, thank you for taking the time to, have to show you us back. around. I appreciate it. So let's come on inside, guys. I'm, I'm told this is the green room, right? This is where, what is this room? What are we in? I don't know, it's kind of a man cave or something. <laughs> man cave. We do our, our, our warm up reloads here uh, for the start of the class. With the yeah. AT4, with the, with the rocket launcher back? Yeah. yeah, yeah, you gotta learn how to load that fast. Ah, uh, um, yeah. And just uh, some of the movies that, that I love and inspired me, Dirty Harry is the reason why I'm standing here. Lethal Weapon in the 80s, got me supercharged again. I think they're the two best cop movies ever made. These movies apart, do you watch them and go, man, that's ridiculous, He's, his stance is wrong, or, you know, military guys are known for Well, here's the funny part. He came out about seven or eight years ago, Mel. I was really excited to meet him. Of all the stars, like he's... Oh, he, so he was here? Yeah. Oh. There's a video where I do the smiley face for him, and he's videoing it with a... He wouldn't meet the weapon when he's at the range, and he shoots the smiley yeah, face yeah. into the target. Yeah. So I got to do that for him. So it's like a bucket list thing. That's pretty cool. So it was pretty awesome, and he was so cool. And, uh, uh, but I asked him, I go, like, who trained for the movies? I don't know. So they just threw a gun in my hand. And I go, well, your grip is actually pretty good. You weren't like a cup and saucer nonsense, like, you know, James Bond yeah. or whatever. And he did a good job, you know? What have you worked on here? Uh, the Kingdom way back in 2006. Oh, yeah, I remember that. That was a, that was a fun day. Uh, Peter Berg had everybody come out here. He's actually back out here but again. But 2006, right? so how long have you... Man, I think people, the world, found out, I think, about you with Keanu, right? Running, yeah. running and gunning. Yeah. But 2006, when did you get started? Was it bef before that, or was uh, that the Genesis? Probably, probably uh, Avatar 1. Uh, uh, they, we, we did some of that here. Then Avatar, all the other avatars that have been in the making now since the beginning of Mankind, we, we did all the training for that. Sam Worthington is one of the best shooters I've ever seen. Really? Yeah, the British guys are crazy. Like him and Aaron Taylor Johnson are freaking maniacs. They can't get guns out. I mean, they're natural. So they're just natural. I know, it's just weird. They went in bad, bad habits. So that, uh, then when I kind of got into it, uh, my friend Chris Perez, he's a, one of my best friends in shooting. We, 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 I won nationals, he was second place, all this fun stuff. And him and I, he's now kicking ass again out of retirement from being a cop. He says, hey, do you want to come down and watch Tom Cruise train for collateral? Mm. I'm like where? It's like the Wayside Sheriff's Department by Magic Mountain. So I went down there and saw Tom there with Mick Gould and Tom's hair's all long. He's walking along. Mick Gould's training. Like he walks along and Mick Gould goes like, he goes like, ah, 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 blah, 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 blah. And all this fun stuff. So I was watching all that. Got to know Michael Mann, and uh, I wanted to go next level in the guns. So. David Russo introduced me to him. He's, a, he's Rene Russo's brother mm. from Lethal Weapon. The oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And so he was at, uh, he was seeing, he went to go see Michael Mann. He's like, the guns you pick in movies are outdated. Michael Mann's like, what are you talking about? I know guns. Because Michael Mann shot on this cup back in the day with, Dave, uh, with Jim Zubiani. It's a whole other story. I want to ask you about that cup in a minute. Yeah, so so he shot Southwest Pistol League back in the 80s with Jim, who was a, who was a master class shooter back then, who was actually in Miami Vice, the famous scene, the, yeah, the shredding, yeah. the whole thing, amazing. I uh, got to know him, it's a whole other story. And so long story short, he showed him some infinity guns, they were island barrel guns, to Michael Mann. He flipped out, like, oh my God, these are amazing. Then later that gun showed up in Heroes, all through Heroes, see this infinity oh, with compensated gun, yeah. they tore him glasses. The, the TV show. Yeah. Yeah, that all, was a great all show. five seasons, and then five years later it came back for one failure season. I was able to get the gun back on there for no apparent reason. And, that's kind of just a history of my Hollywood nonsense. Well, what about Margot? Because she's the, not, not, no disrespect to all the men in the room, but she catches my eye first. Has she been here yet? No, her brother uh, shot here. He's a really, really nice guy. He's a stunt man. What do you got here? This, I mean, you got a director's chair? This is very cool. Um, in France, Keanu got me this. No this, kidding. Uh, oh, look at that. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. It's a really kind <laughs> gift, you know, when we're doing John Wick 4. Now, uh, so. as a movie buff, because it's clear you're not just an incredible shooter. You're you're like a movie guy. Yeah. How cool is that? It's it's super cool. Yeah. Actually, I was mad at Matt because like it disappeared one day, and I'm like, it's stolen, damn it! And they brought it to an event. Well, we have to talk about this trophy here. There are lots of names on this trophy. I see lots of different names on this trophy going back to 1963. Well, this is where you know, the shooting sports started in the Southwest Pistol really? League in 1963. Uh, Ollie Ray Chapman is a very legendary name. 
uh, Buck Toddy, Ray Chapman, Al Nichols back and forth shredding each other for years. Mike Dalton. And then Dalton came on. Dalton's a great guy. He put matches on out here until he messed it up. Then there's Jim Zibiani. He was he's in Manhunter with uh, the Michael Mann movie. He's a guy like there's a charter as a bulldog. A, a, a lazy safety. That's slugs. him. That's him. He knows his shit, right? No kidding. So he won in uh, '84, '88. Uh, Lance, I met him. He got me into shooting down the street. Dave Does it Dancy. end at '94? What's on? No, no, no. It goes around the other side. What's so, on it? So I got started in the '90s. <laughs> there's and, a, he has a lot of your names actually, on there. Quite actually, a few. when I very first started. A year before that, in here somewhere, so Dave was winning. That was limited. This is unlimited, the race gun scope stuff. So I had a. You, a guys, long... you guys see all these? And then I jumped to carry optics. <laughs> carry optics became the most popular division in all of competition. So I jumped on there a couple of years ago, and I just won it uh, a few, uh, a week ago or whatever. So I'm going to be on there again. I, li I like yeah, the yeah. humility of just glossing over your name on here like yeah. 30 times in a row. It's and then nice. uh, my Tatiana's done good. She's wonderful. She's been beating men and coming in here. And drunk oh, look she at won that. again. Yeah. She won second one. Very so, cool. Uh, so that's all the, the shoot. Some of the, and I got a three gun. That's where it really, where it took me next level. Mm. So I was training James Cameron here in 97. And um, he wanted to lay down money for classes. It was the first big star that ever came. Like the, the, uh, before that was Norm, came out the 38. You know? And then I, I worked with uh, Dan Aykroyd one Wait, time. Wait, Norm from Cheers? Yeah. Norm! <laughs> so Norm came out the 38, I gave him a class, like, yay, my career started. And then years later, uh, my bodybuilding friend, John Richling, he was like bodybuilding the stars from the Arnold era, this big six foot three, blonde mammoth monster man. He's like, I'm bringing out James Cameron. And I'll show you over here, like the mountain kind of. So. On this mountain, I laid out, I had nothing here, none of these targets, just dirt, no property, no nothing. So here? Here. It all started here. Yeah. This, this place is legacy. Yeah. So in 90, 97, he came out, and uh, well, for like three, like a month, I'm like, he's never coming. I've had so many people promise, nothing ever happens. It's all never going to happen, right? The day is coming. I'm like, he's really coming. Holy shit. So I put a million water bottles up there, stupid shit, laid out my crazy assault weapons, you know, Styrol, HK91, all the guns you could buy in the recycler back then without even any paperwork, right? Lay all this shit out, and he comes down in a couple of Hummers. He's got this guy, uh, uh, William Abernathy, with him. He's the writer. He's the guy in... In uh, uh, the in Titanic, he's the guy with the the, the smiley face bullet hole. He, he's actually his friend, you know. He lives at his place at the time. They all come out. They got these bodybuilder guys, his friend, and they all like jump to all the assault weapons. Oh my God! Look at these crazy guns! Oh my God! And Cameron's like, I heard you're some kind of a grandmaster pistol shooter. Hmm. I'm like, yeah. He's like, what is that? I go, well, uh, he's got this crazy weaver stance. I'm trying to fix his weaver stance. He's covered in saucer. And he's got a little combat commander from Terminator 2, some Israeli trainer got it for him. And he's like, I'm bending his shit. He goes, stop. I'm like, ah. I'm like, James Cameron's yelling at me. Holy shit. And he's like, before I change all this shit, let me see if he can even freaking shoot, right? Oh. So, so I got a 2011 on back then. I didn't build it, obviously. And so I'm like, holy shit. And 40 caliber is way more powerful than nine, nine millimeter stuff we shoot nowadays. So like, all right, okay, you have these targets lined up, paper targets. So literally, Jesus Christ came down through my body. He shred these targets, we hold up. He's like, holy shit, though. Did you guys see that shit? Did you see that? Just like a machine gun. What, oh, show me the grip. Fix the stance in it. And all that stuff. And back then, I was super broke. So he laid down a check for 10 grand. I'm wow. like, this is the biggest money I ever saw. One, one thing for me. Yeah. I feel like John Wick, man. <laughs> Do not fuck with me. I'm going to shoot these zombies again. Just shoot whatever you want. <laughs> My friend, uh, Kirk Hyatt, got me into three-gun. So it opened up a whole new world for us to train with shotguns, pistols, rifles, long range. So I didn't do it, I didn't do it for James Cameron, but it, it helped that I got into three-gun, and that bled into that. Is he a good, after all that time, how is he as a shooter? He is the deadliest uh, director shooter out there. <laughs> the only guy that's now there is the director of John Wick. Because he's here all the time, because yeah. Jim came out re about... Two or three years ago, he was so, like it took literally an hour to get back online. He was super good, but Chad Stahelski, he's been training like for years, you know, like all the time. So he's like, I, I call him the deadliest director on the planet. Well, what do we got over here? We got you got a refrigerator. Want some water? I, I'm mostly interested in why you have a uh, what, is, what is what is sarcophagus? What is uh, that? It's What's for, this? Just in case you piss me off. This is a fully functioning yeah keychain 2011 yes, with a it. slide. It's got it's got a magazine release. Yeah. A trigger, the safety works, you know, because safety first. Yeah, ambi safety. Yeah, it's got ambi safety on this. Let's go into your other room. So we have uh, we have some lighting and video equipment here because, well, I'm, I'm sure you're used to that, right? We got people filming and celebrities here all the time. Yeah, we filmed a lot of fun stuff here. I, I think this, the first, when I came into this room and I saw this safe with all these pockets and all these weapons. Lots of guns. 
weapons. This is this is this is pretty neat. Is this for display? Do you guys shoot no, all this, these? This what? is the this is the range training guns, ammo, gear, accessories, holsters. Well, holsters are over there, but this is where I need all my stuff. You know. Say so, everybody. This is all the celebrities, all the actors. Everybody all comes here and trains. They're all by. here. So we got a door over here. I noticed when I first came here with a whole bunch of signatures. Um, we just came up with the idea of having them sign the door, and it just started taking off and. Literally, there's no, not much room left. Like, there's there's James Cameron, but it looks like Jim Carrey. There's Keanu up there. I was going to say, do you recognize? What what are some of the names um, we're going to recognize it's here? It's everybody. It's, uh, it's, oh, my God. It's everybody you've seen videos of and a lot of new ones. How old is the door? Uh, probably 2014 or so. Charlie Theron and, well, it's uh, Chris Pine. Um, is that Rand Paul? Yeah, Rand Paul. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, he literally was the worst shooter that's ever walked the earth. So. We won't. We, nobody, <laughs> nobody has seen this video. He doesn't have to. He can always come back for more. I mean, more. he does good things, but I mean, he, it was brutal, so. John Wayne. How yeah, about one him? My, he's one he's one another one of, your, one of your heroes, I was going to say. He's yeah. a Clint Eastwood type, for John sure. Wayne, Clint Eastwood, two of my biggest heroes. Like, I'd love to meet Clint Eastwood. I wanted to meet Burt Reynolds really bad, but I was really bummed out when what happened a couple years ago. What about this table? What's the story? How did you... How did you end up, Terran Tactical Innovations, those guns showed up in John Wick 2 or 3? When did they? In 2, 3, 4. And, and how did, uh, obviously he chose the wrong guns in John Wick 1. How, what was the story? <laughs> how, did, how did you get involved in, you know, what, did the director say, make me some guns? Or the suggestion was, hey, this guy is like the greatest I mean, the assassin on Earth. The is super open-minded and he's not stubborn and he's not dogmatic. And he, like, like he pushed me as a trainer beyond anything I ever expected because he's, he's a trainer. Long, if you know his story really quick, he was a stuntman for Keanu, picked out of hundreds of guys for his martial arts background. I didn't know uh, For the Matrix, the very first Matrix. And they picked him because he did some insane kick and some old you know, VHS tape, whatever. Holy shit, this guy's the guy. And he looks enough like Keanu, and a little more chiseled face or whatever. And now you can go back and watch it. You can totally see Chad, you know. So long story short, he's doing the movie and the scene with the rail car and Agent Smith and jumps on and it pulls it up and it breaks through this thing. Well, the cable line broke. The stuntman landed on Chad on the cable cars, broke like something, 80 bones. And Chad and I, he's telling me a story we're driving to matches. We shot matches together for years. He's really good. So I'd love to hear these stories. It's me and him driving on the 